Welcome to part six of our selection programming series. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the radio group component. Now, if you have used a, a program like Word or Excel and you wanted to change the, the shape or the, the way the layout of the or orientation, actually, of the page, you might have seen something that looks like this. Now, those controls there, those circles, are called radio buttons. And the way radio buttons work is they normally work together with a bunch of other radio buttons as a cluster or a group. And what that means is if one is selected, then all the others will be deselected. You can only select one of the radio buttons in a group at a time. So if I select portrait, it'll change to portrait. But if I then change, hey, I want to select, so there we can see portrait selected. But if I want to go, hey, um, I want to select landscape, then when you select landscape, you'll notice that the portrait gets deselected. And the way you know it's selected is the little black dot appears in the circle area of the one that is selected. Now we can use radio buttons in our program for Delphi. So let's have a look. So if you go to the object inspector and you go look along all those lists of T button and T edit boxes, you'll see there a radio button. Do you see that radio button? Don't use this, please. Don't use the T radio button. You can use it if you want, but for this lesson, I'm going to show you a lot easier way of you don't use the T radio button. This is not a video about the T radio button, but we are going to use a different component to do the exact same thing and probably make our life a little bit easier. So what did I say? Do not use the T radio button. So I want you rather to go further down and you'll see a T radio group. Yes, the T radio group. That's the one I want you to use, please. So we're going to use a T radio group. So what are the properties of a T radio group? Well, there's the name of the T radio group. You must name all your components, just like you would name an edit control. You would put a prefix, like an EDT, in front of edit control. For, for a radio group, let's use a RGP, so we know that we're dealing with the radio group. Then you've got the caption property, and that will be the text that is displayed at the top of uh, the radio group. It won't be the options list. It'll just be a little label that we put right at the top of the, the block of options. So this is a nice little heading that you can put that is displayed to the user. Then to put in the options, if you go to the object inspector, you'll notice that there's a property called items. And you'll see it says they're T strings and you'll see that little ellipse at the end, those three dots at the end. We are going to click on that. And when you click on that, you, this little string list editor will appear. And here you can write down all the, the, the options that you want in your radio group. So you can say, hey, I want four colors. So you can say, I want a red, enter yellow, enter blue, enter green. So you want four options in your string list editor. And when you click OK, your radio group will look something like this. So you will have four options and you can write whatever text you want in them. Okay, so now you'll notice that all of those options are one after each other. It's in one column because the columns property of the radio group is set to one. If for some reason you wanted those options to be next to each other horizontally, then you would want there to be four columns. So if you set the columns property to four, then they would appear next to each other. If you set it to two, then obviously it'll do red and yellow underneath each other, and then blue and green next to that. Um, but let's go back to our columns being one. Okay, so the next property I want to look at is the item index. And this is the most important one to take note of. The item index is going to be the property that tells us which of the options was selected. Okay, so let's have a look. So there we can see item index. You can see at the bottom, the item index at the moment is a negative one. What does that mean? Well, let's look at our radio group. Well, none of them are selected. So that tells us some information. That tells us that if I have a negative one for the item index, that means that nothing is selected. So that could be for like error checking. I could say if the item index is a negative one, then I could have a show message, hey, please select one of the ob options, please. So that's what you would use for the item index being a negative one. I'm going to change that item index. I'm going to change it to a one. Okay, so let's change it to a one. Do you see there's a one at the bottom? Now let's look at the radio group. Oh. The first one isn't selected. The second one, the yellow is selected. What does that mean? Well, you can see the yellow is selected. What does it mean? Well, if we put the item index as a one, that means the second one was selected. Okay. Well, what's before one? Well, the only number before one is a zero. So let's change the item index to a zero. See, we changed it to a zero. Let's look at the radio group. Ah, the first one is selected. The red was selected. Hmm. 
So what does that tell us? That tells us that 0 is the first one, and 1 is the second one, and 2 is the third one. So when you have a radio group, the first option, the item index of it will start at 0 and go from there. So it'll go 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so that's what it means. So the fourth option will be the third item index. So that's so always minus 1 from whatever option you want in order to write the code for it. Now we've done uh, if statements, so we can use our if statements to do a radio group. So we can say the radio group example dot item index. If it's a zero, then do the following code. And if it's a one, then do the following code. That's how you could write code in order for a radio group to whenever you select options in a radio group. But in the previous video, we looked at a case statement. A case statement actually works very nicely uh, with a radio or a group. It's a very nice uh, option to use. So let's look at how we could use a case statement with a radio group. So over here, I'm going to say case of the radio groups dot item index. Not just item index, you need to say which radio group, because you could have lots of radio groups. So you need to say which radio group and which, you say the item index. That's going to be an integer variable, so it's ordinal, so it's okay. Case of item index. If it's a, if it's a zero, if the first one is selected, then you write the statements of what you want to happen if, it, if the first option is selected. It's only one statement. If you want multiple, remember, you must have begin and end. If the second one is selected, then you put a 1. And what statement it must run if the second option is selected. And then when the third and fourth options are selected. And you can keep going for however many uh, radio buttons you've got in your radio group. So let's have a look at how we would do this in Delphi. Yeah, we can see I've got my radio group. You'll notice that I did not go to the radio button. I went all the way to the radio group. So there's my radio group. You see that little label at the top? It says uh, colors. That's the, the caption, the name of it. If I put my mouse over it, you'll see it's RGB colors. And when I click on the side here, you'll notice, hey, go all the way to the items. There are the items. Click on the ellipse and there is where you can add and delete options from your radio group. And there's our item index, which is a negative one, which nothing is selected. Now you can write code on a button that goes and looks at what option was selected. Or we could write code when the actual radio group changes. I'm going to do that by double clicking on the radio group. So this is going to be the code when the radio group gets clicked. So yeah, I'm going to write that case statement. I'm going to say, hey, case, the radio group, what radio group is it? It's the colors radio group. What property of the radio group colors do we look at? Do you know what's selected? Well, it's the item index. Now let's look at that item index. So there's our end. That's the end of our case statement. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, hey, if it's a zero, that means the first one is selected. What do I want to do? Well, uh, what do I want to do? What, what color is it? It's red. I'm going to make the whole form go red. What is our form called? I think it's just called form one. I think I haven't changed the name. Form, form one. There we go. Form one dot color. Is that the color property? I want that color to be CL red. Okay, let's just see if that works. Let's see if that works. So if I run it, obviously only the first option is going to do anything. If the other options are selected, then nothing will happen because there's no statement for them to do it. Let's have a look. So if I click on the first option, the form goes red. Oh, that looks quite snazzy. So let's keep going. I'm going to just copy this first line. And I'm going to just go, hey, we're going to have some more stuff here. How many options? We've got four options. Eh? So we've got four options. So I'm going to come over here and say, okay, if the one, which is the second option, then I think it was yellow. And say, hey, make it yellow. And if the third option, which is item index is a two, what was it? What was the third option? Do you remember? It's blue. It's blue. And then the last option, option four, but the item index is a three. It's going to change to green. So let's have a look. Let's see how cool this is. Let's run it. Uh, and you click on red, yellow, blue, green. I can actually use my, my, my uh, arrow keys to go up and down through it and go, hey, I can make like a strobe light. 
be like a DJ. Hey, Mr. DJ. There we go. So there we go. So let's close it. There's our use of our radio group We're using the Artem Index. And based on what the Artem Index is, is what the code we're going to run. Great. For the other videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We'd love to hear from you and get some feedback from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.